City? Oh, I was, I was born ready. <laughs> you think I should announce the show? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Buju. And welcome back to Buju Nana Buju. A live stream podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. I am Nana Buju. This is the lovely and the talented Natasha. Buju, everybody! Welcome to the show! Over here is the, uh, what you call it, the rock star cartoonist, Michael Lyons. Hello, everyone! Welcome back to the show! And, uh, and yeah, we're all together again here on a, on a Friday with Kizzy Renee Davis. Buju, Kizzy Renee Davis. Guess what, sweetie? Kizzy's here? Yep. Kizzy gets a gold star! Gold star for Kizzy. She's first in the line. And it's just the four of us. Just the four of us. We can make it if we try. Nah. Oh, and then there's Paul Stanley, of course. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. And uh, Gene Simmons. Oh, yeah! Gene doesn't have much to say. How you guys doing? Hey, we're doing great. How you doing, Ace? Ack! I'm all right, Curly. Got the kiss guys up there. Eric doesn't say much. He's uh, well, you know, he's dead. But the other guys are still alive. Oh, just the four of us. Oh, now there's five because Weesonee's here. Hey, Buju, Weesonee, Buju, uh, Weesonee's here, sweetie. A silver star for Weesonee. Weesonee. Weesonee's here because it's Friday. It must be Nano gives you good. It must be the fifth day, sweetie. Yep. Friday, Nano gives you good. The fifth day, Friday. So what do you want to say about Friday, sweetie? Oh, thank God it's Friday. That's what I want to say. Thank you, Kitchy Mountain Dew, that it's Friday. Oh, you're more than ha- more than welcome, my daughter. <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, Kitchy Mountain Dew. Hello, everyone. How are ye? I didn't know you'd be stopping in today. Oh, you know, I'm always listening to your prayers, and I'm always watching your show, me son. Oh, <laughs> well, that's cool. Get your money to. That means great spirit for you chamokes. <laughs> for you chamoka men who uh, stumble on this show. Because you see, in the Anishinaabe way, we have a special connection to the spirit world. We, uh, we pray to Kichimanadu. Ha, huh, Kichimanadu. That's right, my son. The Anishinaabe people there. Oh, I, I love me Anishinaabe people. <laughs> I'm not sure why he has that accent, but apparently he does. Let's see who else is here. Um, la, 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 la. Jim Dunn is here. Mino Giga Jabe. Mino Giga Jabe, Jim. Jim's here, sweetie. Hey, Jim, how's it going? Mino Giga Jabe. Jim's saying, uh, good morning. Mino Giga Jabe. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. La 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 la. How oh, have you been watching the news, sweetie? Have I ever? <laughs> Not really. I went on bit shoot and I watched some videos. Yeah. I like it. People can't decide if it's Afghanistan. In Minnesota, that's what we call it, Afghanistan. That's the uh, country where they make the Afghans. Yeah, the Afghan people. Afghanistan. Or Afghanistan. This just in. World News Report. Afghanistan. The Taliban have overtaken Afghanistan. <laughs> but yeah, apparently... Uh, um, <laughs> the Americans... Uh, Decided to up and leave. They're like, fine. We're going back to our country. And they didn't really tell anybody. It was like, oh, to heck with you guys. We're out of here. And, you know. The one thing I don't understand is, like, the people, you've seen that video where people are, like, jumping on the planes? <laughs> yeah. I know. It's funny, isn't it? Um, what's their game plan? Do they really think they're just going to hang on to the outside of a jet airplane and fly up 30,000 feet and just fly to America and then they'll land and be like, oh, 
I'm so lucky I got in front of the line. I was able to jump on the outside of a plane. It's not in a helicopter, you guys. This isn't Vietnam. True. Because Vietnam had helicopters. You could jump on and, you know, they weren't going that far <laughs> or that high. These people are jumping on the outside of a jet airplane. I mean, I mean that's really going to mess up your hair. Oh, your hair would be a total mess. You think it's a mess after you ride on a motorcycle with no helmet. Try riding on the outside of a plane. But that's a shame, huh? Yeah, it's it's so weird. It just reminds you, like, I never understood why we were there in the first place. Yeah, were we fighting a war against the Taliban for 20 years? And then in one day, they just come, we're like, okay, you can let all your prisoners out of jail. We're, we're going home. Please don't uh, bomb us. Oh, that wasn't you guys? In 9-11, that was actually the... Uh, Saudi Arabia? Oh. Why are we here? <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's going on. Afghanistan. Do you have an Afghan? I got a couple of Afghans. Yeah. That's one thing they contributed to the world. Yarn and um, heroin. <laughs> yep, yarn and heroin and flying carpets. I know, how come everyone forgets about flying carpets? I know, that was such a cool thing, flying carpets and genies. You know, I think in uh, Afghanistan they worship genies. <laughs> no, I think they're Muslim. They, they, they worship Muslim, Musam. They worship Muhammad. Muhammad. Muhammad Ali? Yeah, get in line. You and all of America. <laughs> no, a different Muhammad. Yeah. Well, I think Muhammad Ali should start a. Is he dead? He might be dead. Oh, sorry. I talk like I love Muhammad Ali, and then I don't even know if he's alive or dead. Yeah, I can't remember. Is Muhammad Ali dead? Anyway, but he—if he was still alive, he could start a church. People would would. Well, maybe it's even better that he's dead. People should be worshiping, uh, they should start a religion for Muhammad Ali. Because you know why? Why? Because he was, he was, um, he would float like a butterfly, but he'd sting like a bee. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. And he would say, I'm the greatest of all time. And he uh, protested the Vietnam War somehow. I don't remember seeing him out there, you know, marching with the hippies, but I think they put him in jail for that or took away one of his awards. I never saw the movie. But I remember Muhammad Ali, everybody does. He was like the most famous. It was like Muhammad Ali and Bruce Jenner when I was a kid. And later on came, you know, Michael Jordan. You know, these were the big guys. Oh, that's right. I wanted to do a show. Today's show is about um, that one basketball player. <laughs> You're looking at me. I don't watch basketball. Yeah, he's the most Googled thing. And I thought, oh, we should, we should do a show where you just talk. LeBron James. Yeah. Today's show, we're going to talk about LeBron James. The Ojibwe word for LeBron James is LeBron James. But how about LeBron James, huh? Oh, he's my favorite. Yeah. LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James. So today, i got to come up with some excuse to title this live stream, LeBron James. Hey, Jim Dunn, me, Gwachaniji, Jim just gave us 10 bucks. Ah, oh, Jim, thank you so much. Yeah, it's really nice of you, it's me, Gwach. Yikes, I feel bad about all the bad stuff they say about Jim behind his back now. I know. Don't don't mention it. Yeah, hey. Like I always tell everybody, hey, you want to trust somebody? Jim Dunn. He's got my vote. But anyway. <laughs> oh, Jamie's here. Jamie says, hey, Boozhoo, Jamie. Aren't these the indigenous people of the land? Some some days they have been corrupted by Telly. Uh, 
Oh, of that land, Jamie? You mean um, the Taliban? Yeah, they might be, actually. I don't know. I never understood, like, who are we to tell some other country that they can't have uh, the Taliban? <laughs> you know, it's really none of my business. I don't know. Um, and what are all those people running from? Do they just think the Taliban's going to start opening fire on their own people? I mean, they're evil, but they got a method to their ways. They don't just kill people in the airport. <laughs> you know, these guys have just got let out of jail. They're like, let me get my bearings, all right? But I don't know. LeBron James, did he do something new recently? Yes. Okay, LeBron James did something recently. Was he in a movie? Was that LeBron James who was in Space Jam 2? <laughs> I don't even know. Um, it could be. LeBron James. That's a good name. Because you got LeBron, which is unique. But then the James, you know, it's biblical. I am LeBron James. You know, it's very important when you name your children. You know, LeBron James's mom was like, you know what? I bet you... My my boy here, he's gonna he's gonna do great things. Someday many people will will write his name down in a an invention they'll make in the future called Google and computers. So I'm gonna wanna give him an important sounding name. LeBron James. Oh. What's my middle name, Mom? I'm gonna call you middle name Jimmy. You'll be LeBron Jimmy James. Because <laughs> what? Let's just call you Jimmy James. Because no, no. She goes like, Jammy James? Jammy Jam Jam. He's like, no, quit giving me nicknames, Mom. I'm going to be LeBron James. Okay, Jimmy Jam Jam. Like, Mom, I'm telling you, don't do that. LeBron James. They'll know I'm black even before they see me. I am LeBron. You know, some names that just sound black, LeBron. But James, you know, that's biblical. Oh, I'm James. Wasn't uh, Jesus' brother's name James? Yeah. You going to tell the James story? Yeah, sure. All right, here we go. Back in the days. This is for um, uh, Jim Dunn's $10 uh, live stream chat. I'd like to dedicate this story. It is a biblical story. This is the story of James Christ. <laughs> James H. Christ, the brother of Jesus. You see, back in the days of the Bible grandfathers, there was a man who walked on water and forgave the sins of all mankind. And he died and res resurrected three days later. He was the son of God. And he was the son of a woman named Mary. But you see, he also had like half brothers and sisters. After he was born in a manger in Bethlehem, and people came from Far East wise men, they gave him gold and frankincense and myrrh. Um, you know, Mary and Joseph, they kept, uh, you know, they got married and then they had a family. So raising little uh, Jesus. Um, and then they had, you know, more kids. And one of those kids was James. And all oh, that James, he looked up to Jesus, you know. Just like every little brother, he'd just follow in his footsteps, you know. When Jesus would outgrow something, he'd give him the hand-me-downs to James. And they looked alike, you know. Sometimes people in town would be like, Hey, Jesus! Oh, sorry, James, I thought you were your brother, you know. But it wasn't easy. Like, there was that one time they went out on the lake and James almost drowned. <laughs> oh, because Jesus was walking on the water? Yeah, James just falls right in and he's like, whoa. And Jesus is like, James, I told you, you can't do everything I can do. But, you know, they play sports and, you know, Jesus was older and, you know, the son of God. So he's way better at basketball. They play a little one-on-one, -on -one, but Jesus would, you know, he'd never miss. He was the son of God. Every time he did a hook shot, oh, swish, you know. He would just fly over him, you know. He could ascend into the sky and just slam dunk it over James. You know, it, was, it was frustrating for James. 
Well, the day came of the big, big wedding feast, and the whole Mary Joseph family from Nazareth were, were invited. There was Jesus and James and Mary and Joseph and, and the other brothers and sisters. Nobody remembers. And uh, what happens? Oh, they run out of wine. So Mary pulls Jesus aside. Hey, you know, son, you know, this party is going to fizzle out if we run out of wine. Can you make some more wine? He goes, yes, mother. For it is written, you know, honor your mother and father, you know. He was always carrying on like that, you know, but he was a really good son. He would do whatever his mom said. Okay, mom, I will honor you. And so he goes, doo, 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 poof, and he turns this water into wine. And oh, wow, it's really great wine, and everybody's happy and a party on all night. Uh, so the party wraps up, you know, everyone goes on their way. Next weekend, same thing happens. Only this time, Jesus is gone. He left. He went to another town or something. But they have the wedding, and the family is invited, and James is there with his parents. No Jesus. They run out of wine, and pretty soon the, the crowd's going, Hey, James, uh, we're out of wine. You know, last week your brother, ho oh, uh, he saved the party. You think you can, uh, you can, you can do something for us here? I, I wouldn't ask, but we're all out of wine. And James is like, oh, why do you guys always compare me to my brother? That's unfair. I can't do that. I'm like, come on, man. Why can't you be more like your brother? It's like, because he's the Messiah. All right. You made me say it. <laughs> you made me quote Sam Kennison. You know, so poor old James. You know, and as time would go by, oh, everyone would talk about his older brother, Jesus. But James, James had, uh, you know, all the same burdens as Jesus, but none of the powers. You know, when James died, that was it. Dead. Nobody even remembered what killed James. You know, Jesus, oh, you know, he dies. Three days later, it's like Wolverine. <laughs> Ta-da! You know, rolls that tomb, that stone away. Or maybe the angels did that, I don't remember. He comes out, you know, blaze of glory. What's up? High-fiving people. I'm back. <laughs> I'm going to top it all off. And just so you don't forget about me, watch this. And he flies away. <laughs> People are like, wow. You're coming back, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll be back in a little bit. And here we wait. Anyway, and this has been the story of James, the brother of Jesus, and how LeBron James got his last name. Today we honor LeBron James. LeBron. What a ball player. That's my favorite team, the LeBron James basketball team. What team does he play for? I have no idea. <laughs> it could be basketball season right now. I wouldn't know. I don't think it is because I've heard of March Madness, but maybe that's, that's probably college. I think that's college, but I do think basketball season's in the winter. Is it? Yeah, it goes football, then basketball, then baseball. Oh, okay. LeBron James. LeBron James. Jamie says, I'm hopeful that these are the grandchildren of those who have done poorly in the past. But yes, they are indiscriminately killing their citizens. Oh, black people? <laughs> you want to talk about the racist hate facts? That, yeah, you know, black people are dying at disproportionate rates in this country. And that would be evidence for this being a racist country if it wasn't that it was other black people killing the black people. You know? Um, you know, it gets real, real touchy when you start talking about that stuff. Like talking about any of it, you know, is touchy because people don't like to talk about race in any way. You, you can generalize positive things, sort of. You know, so, oh yeah, Black Lives Matter. Did you know black people were the best at sports, music, and um, 
Oh, something else. That's fine. You can say that. Uh, but you can't say anything critical about a whole group. But then, then, you know, but then also people get kind of touchy when you say stuff like, oh, yeah, Asian people are good at math. You know, Asian people are trustworthy. Asian people are nonviolent. <laughs> you know, you can't say, well, what do you mean? What about karate? What about Billy Jack? Hey, easy. Billy Jack's one of us. Just because he was a karate guy doesn't mean, I don't know what I'm talking about. LeBron James. Good Lord, why am I always late? <laughs> hey, Daniel, what's going on? Speaking of black people, Daniel Black. We're just talking about your brothers in the hood. Um, <laughs> Jamie says, maybe not indiscriminately. They definitely shoot up a bunch of soldiers. Oh, we're talking about Ar Afghanistanis. Sorry. <laughs> I think I just did a racism. Um who <clears throat> were working with the Americans, the ones that had been killing them for years. Oh, are they just shooting up people? I haven't really been following. Hope, hoping the Taliban, Taliban will do better this time around. One hour. Taliban. I don't know. I mean, they sure seem like an organized bunch if they can just retake over a country i mean we're like what's the american equivalent of taliban like the ku klux klan <laughs> you know those guys couldn't just take over the government but we did so i guess when we left it open i heard this the one uh country that didn't evacuate afghanistan is russia <laughs> they're fine they had a good relationship with oh we'll be fine we'll, we'll still have our embassy here in Afghanistan. But I can't pretend I understand anything. I couldn't find Afghanistan on a map. If you had a gun to my head. Well. <laughs> He's not the Messiah. He's a very naughty boy. How dare you? Oh, you mean uh, James? Yeah. Poor James. <laughs> Jamie says, never learned that one in Sunday school. Oh, yeah, it's way in the back of the Bible. It's in there, though. But, you know, James playing basketball with Jesus. Yeah. Read your Bible. Come on, it's all in there. You know, the book of James. Actually, I think there is a book of James. I don't know what I'm talking about. Weeson E says, thumbs up. Come on, give us a thumbs up, you guys. <laughs> he says, thumbs up. Six of you. Now. <laughs> You're such a bully. Um, Robin Williams told a bit about Jesus' brother. Oh, did he really? I should steal it. <laughs> I like to steal comedy bits because I am a wild and crazy guy. No. Um, here's a good stolen bit. I, uh, I, I met an Indian the other day. You know, I was shocked. I thought they were all dead. They ain't all dead, you guys. I personally have witnessed a gathering of a thousand Native Americans in uh, their hunting grounds, their hunting and gathering grounds. I think they called it Walmart in Santa Fe. Anyway, so I saw this guy, and uh, you know he had long hair and braids and brown skin. He looked like an Indian. So I walked up to him. I was like, "Excuse me, sir. I don't want to sound rude, but uh, are you an Indian?" I mean, come on, he was standing in a bow and arrow section. And he goes, yes, I am Arapaho. He goes, oh, uh, Arapaho, you're an Indian. I thought you guys were extinct. You're hunter-gatherers. I learned about you in social studies class. Goes, well, if that's what you want to call us. That's why. What do you call it? I am... An alcoholic. <laughs> and I go, you know, and I still didn't believe him. So I rolled up a, a little piece of paper I had. And I threw it on the ground. And what happened? A single tear. And then I knew he was an Indian. And I go, come on, man. 
Take me to your tribe. I want to meet your people. We've got to have a celebration. I thought you guys were dead. And um, so he took me to their, to their place. And he gave me a teepee to sleep in. And I was like, you know, it sounds kind of cool, but why can't I sleep in a house with you guys? I'm going to watch a TV. So we go in there and, and, they, and they start beating on the drum. And, they came, and a guy came out with a blanket. And he opened up the blanket. And there was a pipe. And three bags of weed. And he goes, the small bag's 20. The middle bag's 50. And the large bag's 100. <laughs> and we smoked up. And the whole, uh, got just high. And I was like, I got the spirits. The spirits got me. Your weed's too strong. And he threw some water in my face. He goes, take it easy, blackface. Oh, I forgot that part. This is a Dave Chappelle bit. Just take it easy, blackface. And uh, what was the punchline to that story? I don't know. But anyway, Dave Chappelle did a whole bit uh, on meeting an Indian once. Kind of sounded like that. If you quote the person, then it's not really stealing. <laughs> but um, have you guys noticed how Indian people love jokes about Indians? You know, it's always like white people who are offended on behalf of Indian people. They don't want to hear someone making a joke about an Indian being drunk. You know, but the Indians will be laughing. Like, I remember when there was that meme, and there was that old drunk guy, and it said, Skoden, S-K-O apostrophe D-E-N. <laughs> you know, I remember reading a couple of, you know, angry white women and talking about, oh, that's not funny. You know, that's a real tragedy. And on the reservation, blah, blah, blah. You know, the oppression of the Indian man. But then real Indians are like, oh, that's hilarious. That's just like you, Skoden. Remember you last night, you know. <laughs> YMCA How come that guy gets to dress up like an Indian on the YMCA Nobody ever calls those gay guys racist Because there's black guys in the band Why? You ever wonder about that, sweetie? About the Indian guy on the, YM, on the village people? Yeah, the village people The YMCA <laughs> How come that guy just got a pass? I know. Well, I think he was a real Indian. I've heard both. I've heard people want to claim he's from Sisseton, South Dakota. The, uh, the Indian guy from the village people. And I've heard people say, no, he's a Puerto Rican. Not La Puerto Rican, you guys. From people from La Porte. Puerto Rican. That's how they say it. Puerto Rican. There's Afghanistan and Puerto Rica. Puerto Rico. Rico is suave. Anyway. Um, yeah, I've, I've also heard that he might just be Puerto Rican. But I think part of it is that he kind of pulled off the look. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I think the, the village people, at least in the old days... The Indian guy character on the village people, that was a pretty authentic looking Dakota powwow outfit. Pre, you know, fancy dancer or not. There was no bustle, but. No, did he have a bustle? But he had like the cool, that thing they wear in the front necklace, I guess. The big bony. I don't know what it is. But he looked cool, and so a lot of people were like, eh. Just let, let let the gays dance around. You, you got to turn everything into a big race issue. Let let the gays dance. I think all the Indian people kind of agreed in 1977 or whenever that song came out. They were like, eh, you know what? How often do we get to see a gay Indian dance? Let them dance or dance. You know, we can make a ruckus over the stereotyping of uh, Pocahontas or something. But for now, we're going to just, we're, everyone kind of looked away. They're like, eh, nah. Sometimes you got to choose your battles. Have you ever heard of the story of uh, 
The Indian guy from the village people? I think so, but will you tell it again? You want me to? Sure. All right. This is the story. And if we had prepared, maybe we can uh, do this later. This is the story of the Indian guy from the village people. Back in the days of the grandfathers, an elder in Pine Ridge Reservation, or Sisseton apparently, Sisseton had a vision. Gitchi Manadu came to him and he said, I want you to get, get out of bed, wake up your son, tell him your son has a destiny. And I want you to, to dress him in the traditional way and to go out into the city. And I want him to be a messenger of our ways, of our culture to the people, to the non-Indians, to the Mukadewias, to the black people, to the Puerto Ricans and the Asian people, and whoever else. Your son is going to be a great man one day. He will be famous, rich. But you must teach him the ways. So, you know, he wakes up from his vision, from his dream, and he wakes up his son, the Indian guy from the village people. He goes, son, I had a vision. You must go to the city. I am going to give you our sacred ceremonial garb of leggings and a loincloth. And I see you've kept yourself pretty buff. So that's good, because you don't need to wear a shirt. You're just going to wear, like, a you know, choker and stuff. And, uh, you know, um, and you must go to the city and seek out people. The Great Spirit told me you should go to a place called, I don't know, what's it called, San Francisco? Something? I don't know. And uh, the, the guy, his son, looks up to him, to his father. Tears in his eyes. He goes, oh my God, I can't believe it. I'm going to be a star. Oh, I forgot to mention this. He has flaming homosexual. He goes, Dad, what are you talking about? You know, I want me to go to San Francisco and be a star? Oh, that's crazy. He said, yes, my son. And here is your costume. Now go. But always remember where you come from. I want you to dance your heart out. Dance for Kichi Manado. And, uh, you know, whatever you do, don't, uh, I mean, this should go without saying, but, you know, when you're out there, make sure you uh, you find a good wife, a woman. Oh, that's gross. No, no way, Dad. I'm going to date so many men. So he goes out to and, uh, you know, became the, uh, he went to San Francisco, he met some other guys, he met a, let's see, there's a biker, and a construction guy, and a cop, and I don't know, a plumber, navy man. I mean, it was a regular rogues gallery of gay guys, but they all started a band. Coincidentally enough, managed by the same record company that, uh, Manage Kiss. Isn't that right, Paul? That's right. We came out the same time as the village people. Yeah. Think about that, Kiss fans. Anyway. Um, so, <laughs> this is the story. And that was the story of the village people. Huh, sweetie? That's what they say. All right. Anyway, what are we talking about? I wanted to talk about rocks and Rocky. A sin is rock. A sin nika is many rocks or something that's rocky. Because I want to talk. Can you get a Sylvester Stallone on the line for us? Yeah, sure. I want to call up Rocky. I've got some questions. Okay, hold on. It's ringing. Hello, Sylvester. Sly, hi, it's it's Nana, it's Natasha, uh -huh, from the Na Nanabushu show. How you doing? Did I wake you up? Oh no, good. 
Say, do you want to be on the show today? Nana Bougie wants to talk to you. <laughs> okay, hang on, I'm going to transfer you. All right, sweeties, on line two. All right, line two. Uh, Mr. Stallone. Hey, yo, what's going on? It, you can call me Sly. Yes, Sly Stallone. How are you, sir? Oh, you know, I'm doing okay. I'm doing all right, you know. I've been up for hours. You know, I went for my run. I went for a run with, uh, you know, my dog, Butkus. Oh, yeah, Butkus. And then I, I went for a short run around the apartment with uh, Cuff and Lynx. Cuff and Lynx? Who are Cuff and Lynx? Uh, you know, they're my turtles. <laughs> you still have those turtles from the movie? Yeah, those things live forever. Cuff and Link are both there, like 45 years old. I, I had no idea. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Yep, they're still alive, and they're still my little my little pets. When they die, I think I'm gonna, you know, have like a, maybe a memorial service for Mick. And then I will indeed, you know, cook up them turtles. Make some turtle soup. Uh, really? I thought they were pets to you. Well, yeah, but come on, they're turtles. That's not really a pet. Yeah, does a turtle count as a pet? Oh, you know, they're, they're kind of, they're like living decoration. I don't think they know that what I am, so no. It's like having a fish. Yeah. I knew a girl once who, uh, she had a pet fish, and she treated it like it was her pet. She'd come home, hi, honey, did you miss me? And uh, she'd tap on the bowl. She goes, yeah, I think, uh, I think he misses me when I'm gone. And I'm like... It's a fish. It's food. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so I, you know, I, I let them out to get some exercise, but they're really slow. You know, even with my inspirational music, the cuff and link, they can hardly run at all. Yeah, huh? Anyway, um, so thanks for uh, taking my call. I was going to ask you, did you know the Ojibwe word for Rocky? Did I know? Of course, it's Asanika. Yeah, exactly. Asanika. Asanika. Rocky. You know, I was in a movie called Rocky. Yeah, you were in like a dozen movies called Rocky. Yeah, you know, forget about it. And uh, so, yeah, my character I was the Italian stallion. And my his name was Rocky. And I wrote that play or that movie. I know, huh? That's pretty cool you wrote the screenplay to Asanika. To Rocky. But how do you, why do you suppose... I mean, you wrote the movie. Why did you call him Rocky? Why did I call the character Rocky? Well, you know, it's kind of loosely based on other boxers. You know, there was Rocky, uh, that famous boxer. Yeah. Or was there a famous boxer named Rocky? Yeah, that famous boxer. Or maybe mobster. Yeah. Rocky Marceloni or something. Yeah, you know. It was kind of a nod to the, uh, you know, real boxers. Yeah. If there had been a church of um, Muhammad Ali, would you have gone to that church? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I wouldn't mind going to a church if Muhammad Ali was the pastor. Yeah, but what if the actual religion was about praying to, like, the ghost of, assuming he's dead, Praying to the ghost of Muhammad Ali. Well, I don't know. That sounds pretty silly. <laughs> you think it's pretty silly? Yeah, you know, I'm a Catholic. You're a Catholic? Yeah, that's right. Didn't you ever watch my movie? And I'm Italian. All Italians are Catholics. Is that right? Yeah, forget about it. Come on, watch your, watch your Godfather. Oh, okay. So every stereotype's true? Yeah, that's right. Forget about it. Hmm. So, yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to call. I wondered if you knew what the Ojibwe word for Rocky was. Yeah, Asanika. It's Rocky. Or you can just say if you see a rock, Asin. Hey, are rocks uh, sacred to the Ojibwe people? Well, yeah, actually. Um, I mean, you know, like everything's sacred. But sometimes when we're in a sweat lodge, we'll call those rocks grandfathers. Grandfathers? Your, your grandfathers are rocks? <laughs> well, no. I mean, if you believe in evolution, then yeah. But uh, we call them grandfathers because they're so old. And sometimes we even think they have a spirit. A rock is a spirit. Come on. Yeah, it's true. Some rocks have spirits. 
You know, they say you can get a, a Manji Manadug from a rack. Um, you know, speaking of Iraq, uh, how come Rambo doesn't get involved in uh, the Middle East? Oh, there was a time, you know, there was a time. <laughs> was there? I don't remember. I think I fought in Vietnam or something. Yeah, that's right. Rambo was uh, long after that. Anyway. So, how's everything else? Oh, you know, not too bad. Not too bad. What are you going to do today? Well, you know, it's Friday. So, I got to I gotta go through the bills. I'm going to pay my bills and then do the dishes. And then I'm, I'll probably take a nap. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of getting up there in years, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. You know, I'm not as young as I used to be. All right. Well, I better let you go then. Hey, uh, yo, can I ask you, uh, how, how do you say that uh, I will see you again in Ojibwe? Oh, we say, Gigawaba Min, Menawa. Gigawaba Min, Menawa. Yeah, Gigawaba Min, Menawa, Rocky. I mean, Sly. Hey, forget about it. Asanika, Rocky. Do you suppose kids still remember Rocky? I don't even care. <laughs> if you're like under 30, under 40, <laughs> old am I? You might not even know who I'm talking about. Asanika is Rocky. You know, but back in the days when, uh, you know, Muhammad Ali <laughs> was king, so was so was Rocky. I never cared about boxing either. I just loved the movie. Ajita Gouge. It's upside down. Seems like the world's upside down. And Ajita Moo. There's an Ajita Moo right there, huh, sweetie? Yep, yeah, it's a red squirrel. Ajita Moo is a red squirrel. I remember hearing that. Maybe they got their name because they're always upside down. So here's a cartoon by... Michael Lyons. Ajita Gouge. Ajita Mooj. Ajita Gouge. Ajita Moo. Because he's an upside down red squirrel. And he's saying Bungan. Peace. Bungan. Is there a joke I'm not seeing? <laughs> no. It's just, it's more of an illustrative cartoon than a, you know, jokey cartoon. Ah. Ajita Goosh. Ajita Moo. Bungan. Peace. Peace and quiet. Anyway. Wanted to, you know, squeeze that in before we get to our big song. Do you want to come up and say hi? Sure. All right. Before I let Natasha get up here, let me get rid of the gibberish cartoon. Here's a song. Um... This one's kind of for my grandma. Uh, those of you who watch the show a lot, uh, know I, I, you know, I was really close to my grandma, and she would tell me stories about the good old days, and she was a boarding school survivor. <laughs> Even though she would never have said that, she was a boarding school graduate. You know. Um. But uh, she used to talk about. Uh, when my dad was born, my grandpa was away at war. It was World War II. So my grandpa was a real Ogichida. My grandpa was a warrior, you know, just like G.I. Joe or Rambo <laughs> or whatever. He was like a skinny Indian Rambo. But, you know, a uh, classic infantry guy with machine guns and jungles. And being shot at. He was gone for three years. And my grandma was by herself. Raising a little boy. My dad. And she had to work. And she had to raise this kid all by herself. And I got the impression. She never quite spelled it out. But I got the impression that my grandpa didn't write back much. That there'd be long gaps where she didn't know what was going on. And so I like to imagine, like, when he got home, there must have been a conversation where he said, you know, uh, maybe I, you know, 
maybe I haven't been around and maybe I didn't, you know, write and, you know, treat you qu quite as good as I should have. But you were always on my mind. And so this is always on my mind. And it's for my grandma. Maybe I hide and love you quite as often as I could have. Maybe I hide and treat you quite as good as I should have. And if I made you feel second best, girl, I'm sorry I was blind. You were always on my mind. You were always on my mind. Maybe I hide and hold you all those lonely, lonely nights. And I guess I never told you I'm so happy that you're mine The little things I should have said and done I just never took the time You were always on my mind You were always on my mind your sweet love hasn't died and give me give me one more chance to keep you satisfied I'll keep you satisfied Said I just never took the time. You were always on my mind. You were always on my mind. Ah, bonjour. How you doing? You were always on my mind. You were always, you're always on my mind, sweetie. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Let's see who's here. Jamie. Bonjour, Jamie. What's going on? Jamie says, the meme is, hey, we don't care for our own vets either. <laughs> hey, we don't care for our own vets either. I know, it's just... Afghanistan. What else is going on? I know, it just kind of overshadowed everything else. What's Hunter Biden been up to? You know, I haven't heard a word about Hunter Biden. Um, is Bill Cosby still on the streets? Yep, I think he's he's a free man. Um, oh, Ilhan Omar. We have a um, one of our state representatives or whatever. Just the darling Ilian Omar. Turns out she really did marry her brother to smuggle him into the U.S. <laughs> and um, that was just proven. They they've got DNA. So well done, Ilian. But I think they're broken up now, and I think he might be in trouble for it. But they can't do anything for her because the statute of limitations. And I think, she, oh, they, they caught her smoking. Elian is a smoker. Oh, yeah, there's those photos of her <laughs> sneaking a cigarette outside. Yep. That's, that's going to hurt her reputation. People don't mind, you know, immigrants kind of dumping on the country. They're like, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you know, 
Is America really worse than the Somali refugee camp we picked you up at? But okay. <laughs> you know. Um, but, uh, where was I going with that? Oh, so there were these pictures that had to do with, I don't know, it was on Fox News anyway, and she's smoking a cigarette. Like, what? That's such a uh, big tobacco activity. You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Ah, la la la. Oh, Jamie says, my husband says he's half black. His mom was a black. <laughs> yeah, Afghanistan is a bad scene, but revealing the U.S. abandonment. Yeah, it really is. You know, we've been kind of comfortably ignoring that we were, what was going on in Afghanistan. It's going to be an interesting year. Oh, the vaccinations, that's in the news. They're, they're really uh, laying down hard and get your vaccination. Please, for the love of God, think of the children. School's going to be a nightmare this year. It's like, okay, get your mask, get your vaccination, get your weekly test. <laughs> I mean, are they opening up the schools or closing them? I follow the science. That's what I should have done. I was going to grab that meme. You ever see those signs where it says, We believe in science. Love is love. Black lives matter. Um, there's a couple of those liberal things. It's like, what do you mean by that? We trust science or we believe science? It's like, okay. Number one, science is never settled. There's no believing in science. It should be constantly questioned and updated and revised. So that's a dumb thing to say. I believe in science. You believe in the scientific method? Well, good for you. Good. So do I. But what they're really saying is, I believe in the my overlords. <laughs> I believe everything CNN says about climate change, global warming, you know. I believe science. That's also kind of a pro-choice thing to say. I believe in science. So abortion isn't more murder. What? How do you figure? <laughs> oh, it's also like a pro-trans thing to say. Because those signs are always like in the rainbow colors. We believe in science in this house. Love is love. It's like, yeah. And hate is hate. <laughs> and nausea is what I get when I look at your sign. What do you mean love is love? Is this pro man boy love association? Is that what we're doing here? <laughs> you know, love is love. So shut up about what I'm doing to my dog. <laughs> I love my dog. So wait. Kind of blanket non-committal statement is love is love. Yeah. Just say what you mean. I support gay sex. <laughs> you know? Just say it. Don't say love is love. Love is just love, you guys. Oh, thank you. I didn't realize. I thought love was jealousy. I thought happiness was flowers, you know. You know, it's love is love. Black lives matter. We've talked about that. Yeah, of course. What a dumb thing to call your group. <laughs> you know, you're just at begging for a fight. Do you support the idea of black lives matter? No. What, you racist? You think you should just kill black people? No, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, what do you mean black lives matter? And why is the assumption that you have to spell that out? Like... What? Really? Oh, I thought it was just fine to kill people if they were black. Thank you. Thank you for your meaningful organization. Black Lives Matter. Thank you for putting the sign up. I'm glad you support the idea that we shouldn't just kill people based on them being black. Okay. And way to kind of not give me the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> you know, you think that enough people who drive by your house need to be reminded because of their inherent racism, they need to be reminded that it's not okay, that people deserve to live. 
even if they're black. <laughs> it's like, yeah, what? Why would you say that? It's such a mean thing to say about to somebody else. I wonder what the other ones were. Um, let's see. We we trust science or we believe science. Uh, love is love. Black lives matter. Yeah, there's like two more. I wonder what else. Do you, any of you have that sign hanging up? I bet you do. Jessica says, haha, my thumbs are pretty nice if I do say so myself. <laughs> Jessica has lovely thumbs. Oh, the ladies downtown, they just rave about these thumbs. You should see it after I put a little bit of thumbnail polish. Oh, I'm somebody then. <laughs> Jamie says, pretty unbelievable to me to um, how people believe that the native people no longer exist. I know. That's kind of what that whole Dave Chappelle bit kind of reveals. That, yeah, up here and to us, it seems like native lives matter. To the rest of the world, they so don't matter that they think we're dead. They call it, oh, you're genocide. <laughs> you know, they're teaching kids and all the Indians were killed. It's like, hey, no, we're still here. <laughs> it's, it's all right. You didn't kill everybody. <laughs> um, see, that myth is being dispelled as so many come into political power. You are too funny. Drops a piece of paper and a tear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that old iron eyes or iron legs or whatever his name was. Hey, we said he, boujou. We did, hey, is that, we said he has a, an emoji with glasses. I think that's supposed to be me. <laughs> He's pretty brilliant kind. Cute, not cut. Oh, go hey, good thing you're cute, nerd. <laughs> Jamie, we still exist. I'm in a sleeper cell here in Scotland. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Black Daniel Black Lives Matter. That's that's where I'm gonna start marching. Daniel Black's Lives Matter. <laughs> Jessica Wapoos. I don't know. But yeah, it is kind of an upside upside down time. You know. Um where's that word? A jitagouge, to be upside down. Where good is bad, right is wrong. You know, to be dumb is to be smart. To be smart is to be dumb. Everything's been inverted. Now women are the strong, empowered ones. And men are weak. And, um... <laughs> to be white is to be bad. To be, yeah. I know. I the upside down. I was on the outside. Kind of weird Ojibwe words to have for today. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why we chose that. <laughs> yeah. Should I go outside for a minute? You wanna? Yeah, I just want to see. Uh, it's not supposed to be so hot today. In fact, I think it's supposed to rain. I want to see if there's rain clouds. Okay, let me lock into your coordinates. I'm going to step outside for a second. All right, honey. I've locked onto your coordinates and uh, one to teleport. One to teleport! Hang on. Hello. Hi, sweetie. It's me. Oh, good. You made it there all right? Yep. I made it here one piece. All right. Give me a call when you want me to pick you up. Hi. Roger that. Roger that. Over and out. Over and out. Bloop. Ah, so here we are again. Country roads take me home to the place where I belong. West Virginia. 
So how are you guys doing? Yeah, it's cloudy. I don't think, I think it's rained like once this summer up here. Did I say it was supposed to rain today? I sure hope so. It's muggy enough. But, yeah. So, how are things in your life? Do you ever sit down and just kind of make a, these are the contents of my consciousness. These are the things I spend time thinking about these days. So what is it for me? These days I think about the show. I think about money. I think about God. <laughs> I think about the past. I mean, it's a lot, but like kind of, I've been cataloging the past. I think about my uh, family. I think about Nana Bougie. Um, I think about the pandemic vaccine stuff. I don't think about the Olympics. <laughs> you could do a little list of like, what are the things that are occupying my mind? What am I actually using my day, my brain? Because sometimes, you know what they say, they go, if you're, um, if you're always anxious and depressed and stuff, it might be because your brain's kind of fixated on something bad. It's on your worries. Or it's on your resentments. I heard it said, I think it was um, Dalai Lama or one of those guys. They go, to, to, to have resentment against another person and holding a grudge, it's like drinking poison, hoping it'll kill your enemy. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's no, it's no good. But what was that song? You've got to get yourself together. You've been stuck in a moment and you can't get out of it some people you know something bad happens and then it gets stuck in a moment they, they can't stop thinking about it and they make some you know it ruins their lives because they that's what post-traumatic stress is you know you go to war and then your brain keeps on replaying all the images in your in your mind and it's like you're still there they say that the brain can't tell the difference between what it's looking at and what it remembers. So, like, if you have a really good memory, your brain and your body is going to respond to that memory like it's actually happening. You know. So, if you're always remembering bad stuff, it's like your body goes through the bad stuff over and over again. That's why I choose to remember only... You know, sexy memories. Nah! <laughs> All right. I should get back. It's getting late. It's not raining yet, but I bet it will later today. I didn't bring any tobacco. All right. Boop. Hello. Hi, sweetie. It's Natasha. Oh, hi, baby. You want me to pick you up? Yeah, would you mind? You got it. Let me um coordinate... Or what's that called? Triangulate. Lock on my coordinates. Yeah, that's it. Scanning for your coordinates. Okay, I'm locking on your coordinates. And uh, one to teleport. Hang on. Okay. Hey, welcome back. Hi, sweetie. How is it outside? Muggy. But that's good, because I think it's going to rain. All right. Well, everybody, I think that's about all the time we have for today. I would like to thank um, everybody for watching me. Did you want to add anything? No, that's good. Um, special thank you to Jim Dunn for your super chat. We really appreciate it. Michael, did you want to say anything? Uh, can you remind them about the um, Patreon and that stuff? Oh, yeah. If you'd like to support the show, we have links in the description to our GoFundMe page, our Patreon page, our PayPal page, and of course to Amazon, where you can buy books by Michael Lyons, the rock star cartoonist. All right. Well, if there's nothing more. Nope, that's pretty good. 
All right, me quitch. Got a wobby egg. Thank you for watching. Boujou. Not a boujou. The podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. I am Natasha. Over here is not a boujou. Okay, me quitch. Over here is Michael Wyatt. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. And uh, I am Natasha. Giga Wabbit Man. Ha ha la 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 di dum Baby would you please teleport me Away Away Hey hey Yeah sure Alright see you later guys One to teleport Hang on